Hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Clinic Gym Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Satterley, and it's my pleasure today to be joined by Dr. John Schultz. Dr. Schultz, how are you today? I'm great, Josh. Thanks for this opportunity. Absolutely. Now, for those of you uh, who don't know Dr. Schultz, which I, I mean, come on, who doesn't know Dr. Schultz? But uh, he is one of the founding members of the Centeno Schultz Clinic in beautiful uh, Colorado. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of buildings with uh, two names hyphened together on the, you know, Smith Jones Clinic. But you really specialize in the world of, uh, what did you call it? Orthobiologics. Correct. Yeah. And to me, what that means is, you help get active people back activer. Absolutely, Josh. The, yeah. the kind of the journey started 16 years ago when we closed the door on a successful pain practice where we were doing high dose steroids, we were burning nerves, and we had a pain practice uh, dispensing opioids. Uh, the problem was that despite it being successful, we weren't sleeping at night because intuitively knew it wasn't the right thing. Yeah. At the same time, there was an article by Saki that demonstrated the regeneration of a disc. And the rest is history. So uh, for the last 16 and a half years, this is all we do. We don't do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, followed by Botox and filler or radio frequency every single day. And Saturday and Sunday, when we're not in clinic, we are consumed by how to get athletes, weekend warriors back in the game utilizing PRP or bone marrow derived stem cells or both. That's our commitment. Because you, Josh, know that surgery all too often, number one, can be life-changing. Life-changing mm -hmm. not to the good. Right, not a positive life change. And you can't take it back. It's like yep. a medial meniscectomy, taking out a meniscus tear. Well, you know what? Well, there's three high-level studies that have demonstrated it's no better than physical therapy. But the business model for orthopedic surgery is you got to keep cutting out that meniscus. Yeah. So we're here also to advocate for patients and their long-term performance and longevity. I love it. So most of the listeners to this uh, podcast right now are actively going to their chiropractic clinic right now. They're, they're actively treating people in their physical therapy location, some strength coaches listening and some blended clinics. And so I think we're jiving with this whole thing. I love the fact that you came out of a quote unquote pain clinic and moved to an active approach because I think everybody listening here, it drives us nuts as conservative therapy providers is like, Hey, you're this thought of like uh, treat pain, treat pain, treat pain. It's like the people in front of me, the patients are telling me that's not all they want. So this idea of that being the only marker or the only goal is it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. And it's certainly not the life that that person in front of me is asking for. Like Again, you could numb all their pain. And if it's like, well, in exchange for you get to sit on the couch and never do any, never go on another hike or another bike ride, they'd be like, forget it. I, I, I'll suffer through everything. And that seems like that's the market you're really serving, huh? That's it. I mean, just recently in the last three months, we have, or I have personally helped three people obtain a goal, like a life changing goal. There was a 75 year old who had, he called it a trophy uh, elk hunt. That's all he's been talking about for the last yeah. three years. But yeah. he had this sciatica and he was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. And he did it. He absolutely awesome. did it. Same thing last year with someone that wanted to do heli skiing. He's going with these rocket scientists. We got him so we could go and really enjoy the deep powder in British Columbia. So it's about, as you speak, about passion and goals, not sitting on the sideline. Yeah. Yeah. And you think about all the other, uh, what, what do you call it? Unintended consequences of, of that man being able to go on that trophy elk hunt. So he had to prep, he had to hike. Yep. He's better with his kids. He's better with his grandkids. He's better at work. He's motivated. Every single health marker just jumps. If you can help him achieve that goal versus, Hey, take this prednisone and, a you know, and some Tylenol and your quote unquote pain will go away. That like it, that doesn't serve it doesn't his work. goals. No one, yeah, I mean, no one wanes except for pharmaceutical. Right. And we've already seen that. This is the same group of people that told us that no one would get addicted. No one's teeth would rot because of all the chronic steroids. We yeah. know the integrity of those people. Yeah. We choose not to interact with them. Yeah. We also have a large CrossFit uh, community here in, in the Denver, Boulder, metropolitan area. And we have single-handedly helped many of our athletes go on to compete 
both regionally and on a national level. So that's, that's awesome. Really exciting. Yeah. yeah, it is. So uh, what I'd love to do with uh, <laughs> today's interview, I want to make sure that everybody listening knows where they can move this chess piece into play in their patient kind of journey. Because I think traditionally, I graduated uh, chiropractic college about 15 years ago. And I think traditionally, as you said, it was like, uh, you take them as far as you can. If you can't have success with that person, like big success that they want to achieve that goal, our options are send to pain management, send to surgery. And it's our job to figure out which one they're going to, because whoever they go to, they're going to have a procedure, right? Like <laughs> we, we need to be the filter. Unfortunately, yeah. like it's pretty rare. And there, there's a short list of surgeons. And that's the only ones I send to in my local area of like, that yep. will tell you like, Hey, you don't, you don't need surgery, go back to whatever. But where do these orthobiologics play a role in these patients that have ongoing pain or they've plateaued at a four out of 10 and they just can't seem right. to get better? So in two specific areas, as you mentioned, if a given patient has plateaued and despite mm -hmm. your gifted hands, your gifted technique, you're just not making progress. Don't forget my good looks and <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a very handsome yeah, guy. It's, a, it's uh, an audio podcast. <laughs> yeah. If you've plateaued mm -hmm. and you don't want to have a surgery or you want to look at everything but a surgery. OK, mm -hmm. so that's it. And the other time is, is we do a lot of patients with instability. And okay. I'm here to tell you, we inject ligaments, we inject, and joint, uh, inject ACLs, but we can't treat them. We keep, can't maintain them mm -hmm. with the daily. So oftentimes, and we have a whole list of chiropractors that we've worked with successfully mm -hmm. to see them after the injections. I mean, we see patients all over the nation coming to here because this is where it all started. So um, really two different things, a plateau or a patient that needs continued care in a local community, but they came to the Denver Boulder area to get treated. Okay, and just to make this very tactical, and you know, obviously we want everybody listening to form a relationship with some provider of this, and yep. hopefully if they're in the Denver area, it's <laughs> the amazing Dr. John Schultz, right? I mean, like why go anywhere else? But in all seriousness, specific conditions that you think are, are well served. Cause I'll tell you chiropractors, we used to be like, you know, Hey, I have back pain or neck pain. Now I would say that every listener of this podcast is getting people in their office every week, if not every day with plantar fasciitis, knee pain, foot pain, hip pain. And once they establish that relationship with a provider, patients typically trust them. And so they go back no matter where the ache or pain is, but if you could give us the top three to five, conditions where you're like, this needs to be at the top of the algorithm. Yeah. So first and foremost, before I dive into that list, it's all related, right? I mean, what shoulder is not related to the neck or which elbow problem? Hey brother, or, you're talking or, to a chiropractor. We've been I, preaching exactly. this message so, for decades. Me right? <laughs> We've been trying to send this message. Yeah. So but we understand it. We actually embrace it, right? Yeah, good. There's no such thing as a hip problem without looking at the, at the back. Right. So too with right, the right, cervical right. spine and the shoulder. So I can tell you categorically that we have developed a treatment for cranial cervical instability that's provided nowhere else in the world. Yeah. So okay. Rather than Perfect. putting in the hardware at the base of the skull and into the cervical spine. Yeah. We do it here. It's done okay. in the back of the mouth. So, but it's all, yeah, it's in the back of the mouth. We go right next wow. to the cord and we put patient stem cells. We've done about 700 of those cases to date. We have a registry and we've made some tremendous successes. Great. Not everyone gets that success, but if we can save one person from that sure. surgery, it's a home run. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Number two, rotator cuff and also posterior. So AO, AA joint, any of the cervical facets. Number two, the rotator cuff is an easy, as long as the uh, injury is not a retract, a full retraction, right? Okay. So if there's a tendinosis, if there's a partial thickness tear, this is a great place for orthobiologics, either PRP <clears throat> or bone marrow derived cells. Why? The problem with the rotator cuff is the number of stem cells has gone down. So it makes no sense to cut it, put in some anchors with the surgeon because the integrity of the tissue is compromised. So let's beef it up with either some bone marrow 
or some PRP or both. And it's very easy to see. So that's really an easy one. And, and just as an aside on that one, I, I have this special group of rotator cuff uh, <laughs> people. I work with a ton of golfers. And so oh, okay. work with country club golfers. I would say that after the age of about, you know, this, this marker is moving all the time, but let's say 70. Yeah. Is it still effective in that? What, what you know, 70 is the new 55, right? Yep. Like that, like 70 is not old for golfer but they start getting kind of that difficult to build muscle, difficult to, you know, keep strength well, on. Kind of age. At 70, yeah. there are lots of things, but there is not a ceiling. Okay. okay. There's cool. not a ceiling. As you know, you need to look at the neck and the shoulder when you're looking sure. at a rotator cuff, right? Because I bet right. you there's a C5-6 stenosis or foraminal narrowing. So you've got to look at both and we treat them both which okay. gets me into the next one. Actually, we've started utilizing intradiscal into the discs, both in the cervical and the lumbar, which have just been incredibly successful. Who would have thought? We initially yeah. were doing bone marrow, but the PRP has been really very effective. All you have to do is have a blood draw in the morning. We do the injection in the afternoon, and it doesn't flare like a bone marrow. Really, it's really impressive. In fact, two of our own docs have had it done on themselves. Wow. Life changing. Nice. Yeah. So upper cervical instability. Upper cervical, rotator cuff. Rotator cuff. Cervical spine. Yep. Okay. ACL knee. I mean, just I'm here to tell you, we developed or we pioneered the technique whereby we can regrow or, or uh, heal, not regrow. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. heal an injured ACL if there are not retractions. Okay. Okay. So if as a general rule, if I have a, a major ligament or um, tendon that has partially torn, partially, correct, partially, but yep. fibers are still intact, I should, it sounds Give to me like I call. should start moving this up, up my Absolutely. options. Okay. Because you know, Josh, as well as I do, that number one, the orthopedic surgeon is not going to say, oh, by the way, this is just a partial thickness tear. In mm -hmm. fact, I have a patient tomorrow that it was just a sprain and he was going to cut out the ACL. It, Can you believe it? <laughs> no, it's funny. Like orthopedic surgeons, it, it, like I don't want to disparage them. Like there are an, a bunch of them that are incredibly smart, but some of them, I swear, I want to like, how would you hang this picture in your house? And they're like, well, at first I'd remove the drywall. <laughs> and then uh, I would probably cut out these two studs and then I put a bar across or a titanium bar across and then I'd hang the picture on that titanium bar. And you're like, do you, like, have you ever hung a picture? I'm talking yeah, simple no, stuff No, obviously here. not. And obviously they wouldn't do the same to their, yeah. to their own children. Right, 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 okay? right. Yeah. yeah. So ligaments, I mean, think about it. Every joint is, de the stability of every joint is dependent upon th two things, the ligaments and the muscles. Okay. We okay. can beef up the, the muscles, but there's nothing that an orthopedic or a physiatrist can do mm -hmm. for the ligaments. But guess what? We can look at them under ultrasound, whether it be all the, the capsule uh, ligaments in the shoulder or the knee or the hip or the ankle or the toes and actually see them and directly inject them. That's an easy one. So any patient that you have that has mild hypermobility, all the way up to those patients with EDS. EDS is Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. Yeah. Gosh, what else are you going to do? You're not going to do surgery on these patients. Right. And we've had some life altering results in those patients. So Very neck, cool. shoulder, low back, knees, home runs. Yeah. Let's dive. I mean, you talked about ACL and, and the neck and shoulder. Dive real quick, if you don't mind, into low back, because I would love to know where this is super high success rate, because one of the issues I think, and one of the reasons I want to have you on this podcast, but one of the issues of being um, a, a ancillary healthcare provider, like a chiropractor is everybody that number one, nobody comes in your office. So that's one thing, but everybody <laughs> who does come to your office yeah. tells you that they have the solution to everything. Right. And like the orthopedic. So, you know, of course we're approached by like the large orthopedic surgery groups that want to get all the referrals. Yeah. But I will, one of the worst days in my clinic is when I had a patient come back about a year after I'd last seen him and they had had surgery and it was not successful. Yeah. And you know, they, they said, Hey, thank you for sending me to Dr. So-and-so unfortunately it didn't work out. And they weren't blaming me. 
Sure. But I'll tell you, that was a rough night of sleep and, and a couple heavy drinks for me because I was like, I, I, I opened this gate, you know, and, and they got jacked. And uh, my interpretation of, of kind of the orthobiologics like you're talking about is, let's say they're not successful for whatever reason. The, the, we're not removing function. We're not remo- increasing pain. And this person did not gain any function and had increased significantly their amount of pain. And I could see in front of me, it was clear as day, their quality of life was significantly lower than when I first met them, you know, and that, that really sucks. So the, the surgery is, you know, high risk, high reward sometimes, but it seems like you are in a, uh, a low risk, high reward scenario. Yeah. I mean, if you do a, a, a PRP or a stem cell and it doesn't work, you can go always have surgery. There's nothing to prevent you from having surgery. But the converse is if you go have surgery, if you go take part of that lamina out during a laminectomy, or if you take part of that disc out with a discectomy, the landscape, as you know it, Mm -hmm. has forever changed. Most importantly, the stability, the ligaments that all hold this functional unit have now changed. Right. Yeah. And you can't get it back. So So, I think it's probably reasonable to start with what's our approach. Our approach is not the, you know, let's find the generator of your pain. Like most clinics, mm -hmm. we acknowledge like you, in fact, we took the chiropractic bottle that it's a functional unit. What does that Mm -hmm. mean? That means that there's a disc, there's exiting nerve roots, there's facets, facet capsules with ligaments, the supraspinous, the interspinous, the ligamentum flavum, and then there's a thoracolumbar fascia. Those all interact and they have to be addressed and treated if a given patient with low back. And if you treat those, there's a good chance, you know, unless it's a grade two spondy, that you're going to get clinical benefit. But it's when you look at it as a functional unit. The other piece that, Josh, many people miss is they miss the tendinopathies. That's to say, yeah, you know, I I got the disc and I got the facets, but they miss the glute, meat, and min tendinopathy, both on Mm -hmm. the origin or down on the greater trochanter. Or Mm -hmm. they missed the the poor performing or or dysfunctioning SI joint. We are absolutely uh, almost paranoid about looking at all the tendinopathies, looking at all the other things that can go wrong. So to give patients the best clinical outcome. I love it. Uh, real quick, Dr. Schultz, while people are listening, can you, if people are jiving with what you're saying and they're like, this is where I want to send people, how can listeners of the show, again, mostly chiropractors, physical therapists, how can they get a hold of your clinic? Yeah. So we have a website, centennialschultz.com. There's a, um, also, it, hopefully, Sarah, who's helping me do this, you can have my email. If you have any questions, just email me and I'll help you. Mm-hmm. I may not get in the weeds with you, but I will, in a timely fashion, get you to the right person. Because we're committed to making a difference in the community. Because when you make a difference in the community, the families and the children prosper. Love it. So talking to professionals here, tell us, you said you mentioned recovery. And so <clears throat> let's just say I go through I have six weeks of care with somebody and we've plateaued and I go, Hey, I, I think, you know, PRP or stem cells, the next thing. So I refer them to your clinic for that patient. What's the recovery time for them after that? I mean, is it almost immediate? Do you say, Hey, no movement for 10 weeks. What's the, it just depends. The- Obviously a patient that has stem cell into the bone in their knee is going to yeah. be different than someone that has just a ligament injection along the atlas. Yeah. So it's just going to t- depend upon what procedure they did. Obviously, that first one to two weeks, we're going to ratchet down the, the level of mobility. Mm-hmm. But we do want you moving. We don't want you on the couch. So you're not sending people home with immobilizers and, and braces and that kind of stuff? Well, with the exception of a, a, a knee, um, an unloader. Okay. So let's say they have a medial compartment, a medial meniscus, or mm-hmm. a, a lesion on the medial compartment. We're going to offload it. Okay. okay. But we do not want you sitting on the couch. So same okay. too with uh, all the ankle ligament stuff that we do. 
Mm-hmm. We're going to stabilize it because of the three phases, the three phases of ligament healing. You know, there's a honeymoon, then there's a disorganization, then a reorganization. We want to give you some artificial support, but you got to be out there doing the work. Yeah. Okay. And, and giving you a t- like a timeline for those things, is it, you know, four to six weeks? Like we would yeah, no, no. So surgeons? typically it's four weeks for the unloader or okay. the ankle brace with the exception if they're going to go out and try to kill it, if they're going to do a prolonged hike, if they're going to go snowshoeing, I want them to put the brace back on. Okay. Sweet. So this is not a, uh, it's not like a, a, you know, the old version of, of ACL, six months of, of rehab following. Absolutely yeah. not. Rehab's important, but if you look at the animal model, animals don't have the luxury of just sitting at the, on the couch and watching Netflix, right? They got to yeah. go out and, 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 you know, do the work. Yeah. So too. Yeah. So too. We, you know, I mean. Funny. My dog just had $5,000 worth of essentially ACL surgery, cruciate ligament surgery, and we're two weeks out and she, you, you couldn't tell. Exactly. Like she, except for the scar and the deficit of uh, dollars in my wallet, but otherwise <laughs> everything's looking fine. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is fantastic. Now, how about repeated procedures? So let's, you know, we have these hard chargers. I mean, you mentioned the CrossFit uh, games yep. athletes um, and, and we, I've seen it a thousand times in my career you treat somebody and you know, you're, you quote unquote, have them at a hundred percent, but their goal or they're the type of person that wants to go out and beat the hell out of themselves. And, and I'm not here to stop them. Like, Hey, it's, you know, it's your life. So can people have multiple procedures, same joint? And how long do you typically separate them or is it not recommended? Go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, we do have those hard charging people, the people that have competitions come up, people that go out and just ratchet hard, you know? Yeah. We We got a three month summer and they hit it hard. And if they flare, it's much easier, Josh, to catch a problem while it's small. Mm -hmm than to get profound instability, then you get cartilage problems and meniscus. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if they call me or they text me, hey, I'm having a problem with this because I did Y, let's get it in and get mm-hmm. the small problem fixed. And also, do you get your teeth cleaned? Yeah. Yeah, twice a year, right? Mm-hmm. Prevention is really key. And some of the, you know, I, I love the fact that you talked about not focusing on pain. There's lots of signs and signals that we can pick up during the exam or during the Mm -hmm. questionnaire. There, there there's some dysfunction, Mm -hmm. you know, those little muscle twitches in your legs or your feet. Those are just some telltale signs that something needs a little bit of work. I don't want to see you when you have a frank radiculopathy or sciatica, right? Right. I'd much rather catch you when you have a little problem. So do we treat a couple times on a given place? Sure. Okay. And then is, if we had one of those hard chargers, so I'm thinking of some, I have a guy that golfs. This is great. This guy golfs harder and more often than anybody I've ever met in my life, right? I mean, yeah. it, he will fit in a, a full day of work and a round and possibly a second round. Like he is a, a machine about golf. Like it's, he's just a machine. Okay. And he and his friends are uh, <laughs> competitive would be an understatement. Yeah. So for example, he went out uh, for his member guest, uh, and by the ninth hole, he had tried to uh, single-handedly put the cart girl through medical school with the amount of booze he was buying. Oh, my. Oh my. <laughs> went to the clubhouse, had hired one of these, uh, you've seen these, like, uh, IV places. So yeah, yeah. His chair set up. He and his three playing buddies all have get IVs at the turn, take an hour off, and then they go back out and do it again and for nine holes. and. Uh, so he's maximizing every, God forbid that he would play a, a round of golf without all the assistance of technology and, and sure. you know, throw money at the problem in the highest regard. Anyways, in my mind, I'm thinking that dude could right now, I would send him to a consult with you for his shoulder, yep. his neck, uh, his hip, and possibly his low back, and maybe even his right knee as I think about this. Yep. Um, guy comes in like that multiple sites that are all a candidate. Do you just start rank ordering? Can you do multiple procedures at the same time? How, how Great question. That? Great question. Absolutely. I mean, as we talked about, it's a functional unit. Mm-hmm. Where does the neck stop and the shoulder start? I mean, yeah. absolutely. So we oftentimes treat the neck, the shoulder, the hip and the back in one setting. Awesome. However, 
That said, with this guy, we have to have a, a, a mutually agreed upon plan that this is, you know, we're going to spend time, we're going to spend money, and I don't want to do this in vain. So yeah. he's got to give me some grace and he's got to cooperate with rehab. If he thinks that platelets or stem cell by themselves without any rehab, without mm -hmm. any downtime, is going to be the solution, I probably won't treat him. Because right. it's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. There are seasons in this guy's life where he will uh, Slow down. change his approach in, in exchange for something else. You know, well, so there you go. Tournament season is, is not that time, but yep. I think that's that's what's exciting. So if we have somebody that need that has a a, a you know, let's say somebody, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm sure you've had a lot of patients who are running local marathons to qualify for Boston, right? And we know yeah. the date of Boston. How far before Boston Marathon, for example, it's, it's going to be a competitive environment, whatnot. How far before that would you say, hey, here's our drop dead date. Don't get a procedure in this 10-week window, 8-week window, 20-week window, whatever it is, before a major competition like that? <coughs> That's a hard one because it might be a tendinopathy, a mild tendinopathy, like if they have a pes answering insertion. Yeah. That would be okay. But if they have a disc herniation, that's a completely mm -hmm. ball of wax. So I'm a little hesitant to say that there's a drop down. I mean, okay. if, if the Boston's coming and they have a minor tendon problem, a month within the, within the race. Okay. But if they have a disc herniation, it's going to be months because mm -hmm. obviously they're going to be pounding that disc every single stride so I, I don't have a hard answer for you um, okay unfortunately yeah i just because i'm sure a lot of listeners here for whether it's running season or crossfit season or whatever they have a yearly season right and yep. baseball and everything and i'm i'm always wondering like when is the best time to do this because you're like it it is uh, as you've dealt with athletes that conversation of hey we need to shut this down for a set amount of time yep is is not a, a frivolous conversation. Like it's a serious, like, let's talk about everything that's going on here. And if you have a pro that's looking to sign a contract or something like that, like there's even more pressure on the situation, but. The best time is when you can cooperate with the rehab protocol and allow the injected area to heal. So okay. there's the answer. Give me yeah. your best window. What's your longest window that you're going to be compliant? Because yeah. otherwise you're cheating the system and, and you know, this isn't pixie dust. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it used to be easy too, because it used to be that sports had an off season and certainly in the, you know, youth sports and college there, oh, yeah. there no longer seems to be an off season at any point for any sport. Well, let's but, talk about that youth because right yeah. now, whether you know it or not, there's absolutely an epidemic of young women that are hurting their ACLs and medial meniscus. It's like 6.8 times as likely female yeah. to male, right? Yeah. And guess what they get shuffled to? They get shuffled off the court, off the field, to where? An orthopedic, orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, we need to somehow stop this epidemic. Well, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, that's funny you mentioned that. I'm, I'm thinking that stem cells, PRP is for a more aged population. I in just arbitrarily 35 and up in my mind. Right. But yeah. Now that you say that, I'm like, well, hell, they actually have more the the possibility. Like you're you're uh, the you're taking a, potential a thimble from on the a ocean 16 point, year old right? girl who who uh -huh. partially tore her ACL is huge, and her okay. future is so compromised by yeah. cutting it out, drilling the holes, making it too loose, too tight, getting some arthritis, and then by the way, we're going to trim that meniscus. Age 16. Yeah. Yeah. So it, just the removal of a you know, vital part of like the knee mechanics structure, mechanical functional yeah. unit, as you're saying, I'm like, whose thought was this? Like we would never go to a car mechanic and go, all right, I'm, well, it looks like it's rattling. So I'm going to just remove this part. Like what part, what part in your motor can be removed and it's not going to affect the car's performance. You know, it's a, we so, both know, Josh, it's a business model. Yeah. yeah. It's a business model. So, so go back just real quick. Cause I, that yep. this, is getting my mind moving. So we have that adolescent female with a partial ACL tear. I mean, I've had, I don't know, 150 of those come through my office at some point. So I'm the one I'm thinking in my mind is that 14 to 16 year old uh, female that's start her, she's hitting her growth spurt, right? So she's yep. getting lanky and lanky and the levers are just extending every night. She partially <laughs> tears. Yeah. And the downside to me is 
female, especially in that age group, female adolescents have additional social pressures, worries, and a, an ACL injury in volleyball. I mean, basically you just wiped out the next calendar year for her, right? I mean, yeah. So what's the recovery time like in, in this situation? So uh, they get the magic juice from you. And they then, get the stem cell. Yeah. I mean, that's not a PRP. Yeah. That's a bone marrow. Put your hands on your waist. That iliac crest, that's where we mm-hmm. get it. It's a, okay. it's a one-day procedure. They're going to be in a brace for a month, okay? In a specific that to that knee brace? Yep, that ACL okay. brace. They're, they're able to walk. They're able to ambulate. They're going to okay. do physical therapy. After yep. that month, as long as they've got some good quad strength, they're going to come out at about three months. If they've followed the strength, they're going to do what's called return to play yep. exercises. Because yep. if you see a, a young woman – when she um, when she lands, her knees collapse inward. Yeah, guys don't. Okay. So we need to learn. We, she needs to learn how to uh, fall and jump appropriately, and then we get an MRI at about six months, and it's pretty impressive. Usually, so there's a chance she could injure herself in a fall sport, and that fall is going to be scrubbed. The spring will be scrubbed, but she could probably start practicing with whatever sport start of summer probably okay i mean that's a lot better than hey you're going to miss this year and all of next year and then come back that's psychologically that's just such a blow to them that you know it it can send them spiraling unfortunately so that's fantastic and it's it's also the family right because the family's invested in the daughter so it's not just a a single person it's so when we treat young women we treat the family that's awesome so you know, I mean, again, I don't want to disparage orthopedic surgeons, but if you were to walk through the the waiting room of the largest orthopedic surgery outfit in your area, I mean, somewhere around Denver, there's got to be some major player. There are. What percentage of the people in that waiting room do you think you would better serve? I mean, in general, like if if if, if we look at all the people we're that we're to sitting, surgery, that these aren't yeah. fractures that are compound fractures that are open fractures. Yeah, they assist. ambulated in there. With help 60%, of me. 60% of the people okay. sitting in the waiting room, I know I could do a better job. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I really think you get you guys, uh, not, not to give you advice, but I think every chiropractor in the world could undergo some training here to understand where this fits in their model. Because in so many ways, we're just told like, told or it's just what the the person that taught us said. Hey, just it's the reflex, surgery. right? Yeah. When we do the biceps yeah. reflex. It comes up right. like this. Yeah. Gee, I've got an ankle injury. Where yeah. are we going to go? Whoa, we're going to go to an orthopedic yeah. surgeon. Yeah. We need to we need to really stop and look at that reflex and and think about the consequences both for that patient and the community at large, because there for is sure. an alternative. Yeah, and it, <laughs> at no point did you uh, did you. Uh, are we really talking about a, a significant increase in pain? I mean, I've seen people that have spinal surgery, they're dying, they're writhing in pain for you know, hopefully uh, weeks, but sometimes it extends longer than that, you know? And, and that, again, that's not where we want to be. All right. Last question. I, I know okay. I want to respect your time and you got to go uh, Thank you. play Superman and, and help somebody. Uh, it's a team effort. Okay. I, yeah. I'm just one they guy. limped in just and you're going to help them go run a, a marathon this afternoon because that's how powerful this stuff is. It's incredible. Yep. But uh, you were a pain surgeon, I mean, sorry, pain uh, provider for a long time. And, I was. And, and uh, what, looking back, like, let's say you saw 10,000 people as a, as a pain management provider, and now you've seen 10,000 since the moment you decided to switch. Uh, what percent now do you think you truly have helped them versus before? I mean, a guy with your brains and your, you oh, had yeah. every option in the world. I can tell you categorically, Josh, that we, not just me, mm-hmm. we will give every single patient that walks in here, because this is not a mill. Did I tell you that we spend an hour, you know, 40 to uh, 40 to 60 minutes with every new patient? Every new patient gets a physical examination and history, review of imaging, and an ultrasound. Every single yeah. new patient. Yeah. Okay. So we are committed to giving you 110% of everything we know. Who can I serve? I would say we make a, a clinical difference in 70 to 75% of those patients that come through here. And every new patient gets what's called a candidacy grading. I will tell you upfront what the likelihood of your clinical success is and put it in writing mm-hmm. and why. 
So if if they're obese and uh, they're obese, uh, if they're hypersensitive, like, hey, we just got to yeah. face the music here. It's just not going to work. Yeah, and and we'll be completely transparent. Love it. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. Because that right. works. Yeah. And, and everybody wants it to be successful. I mean, you want, you want to know that you're making a difference too, right? Like that's the, that's the kicker is like, it seems like it's rewarding you. All right. Can you throw out the information again, how people can get a hold of you? Yeah. And I'm our sure- website, there's a, am I a candidate? And then Sarah at the end, will give you my email and mm-hmm. then please feel free. Any provider that has a problem or a question, you'll have my email there and I'll, I get to my email with. And if we have a hard charger that wants this, regardless of where they live, uh, I'm your guy. Yeah, we can send them to you. You can consult them. Yeah, they can stay in the night and and leave. Or would you do a procedure? I mean, is it typically a long wait between analysis and or evaluation? It depends where they are. Depends the severity. I mean, if it's a high charging person with a hard deadline, like a yeah. elk, a trophy elk, yeah, or yeah. some major, yeah, we'll fit them in. All right. Okay. I love it. All right. Well, Dr. Schultz, go do the magic. And uh, I'll thank you so I'll much, Josh. With... It was a pleasure. Thank you, our, all the listeners. Too. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, Sarah, you got cleanup crew now. So for those listeners, uh, Sarah is uh, Dr. Schultz's right-hand man or uh, helping him out. So email address, if we want to send, so this would be for a provider that has a patient they want to send his way and has some questions or procedural questions. What's that email address? All right, the direct email address to reach Dr. John Schultz, MD, at the Centeno Schultz Clinic in Broomfield, Colorado. That is J Schultz, and that's S C H U L T Z at Centeno Schultz.com. If you need that spelled, it's C E N T E N O C S C H U L T Z. Um, and we're here for any questions you might have. And please reach out for any questions about patients, any conversations with Dr. Schultz. We'd love to chat. Fantastic. All right, Sarah. Well, thanks for running cleanup crew for your man. You're like the, uh, you're essentially the, the, the brawny guy, right? Like you just go behind Dr. Schultz and wiping up, like cleaning up all the messes. So we appreciate it. Yeah. And hopefully we can get some people over to you. Cause I think this is it. This should be a high priority for anybody listening. I mean, I can think of dozens of patients that at least need the consultation because they've plateaued or they want to get to that next level. And, um, you know, I do everything I can every day for them, but still can have some, some issues that I can't solve. So it's fantastic. I have another option. Absolutely. And if you ever have any questions, you want to reach one of our providers directly. Um, you want to send a referral, you want information about a patient that we're mutually working on, please feel free to call our clinic on our general line and ask for Sarah. I would be more than happy to help you out, get you whatever you need. Fantastic. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. And let Dr. Schultz know I said thanks. And uh, for all my listeners out there, as we end every podcast, we always say, go out there, maximize your license and live the life you dream of. Thanks so much for checking out these videos. I hope they're useful. We'll cover things like rehab, exercise, business model, progressions, layout, everything else that helps you build a clinic. So if you're interested, you can click here, there, here, here, or anywhere to get more videos just like this. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon.